What's up you guys, Nick here. And if you follow me on Instagram, then you know that last week I was on vacation with my wife. We were touring through the Southern United States. It was awesome, but a massive race happened while I was on vacation. And I would be remiss if we didn't talk about it, right? Because there is a young man out there. He's a high schooler who just set a new world record, a new high school record for the fastest 1500 meters ever run by a high schooler. But it goes beyond that. This young man, had he been in college, he's not in college, had he been in college, would have set the NCAA record for 1500 meters as well. Mind blown. I'm talking about Hobbs Kessler. I have never heard of this kid until about, what, three or four months ago, and now he's all anyone can talk about. And for good reason, this kid is dropping insane times. But here is a little revelation. I've actually never, ever watched the kid run. So right now, we're gonna play that race and I'm gonna give you my honest race reaction about Hobbs Kessler and his incredible 1500 meter performance. Let's roll the film. All right, you guys, I am so excited for this race. This is a fast time trialed race. Now, when I think about the fastest tracks in the world, I don't usually think about Lewis and Clark College in, you know, I think it's in Portland. I've raced on this track a few times, but it is not by any means the fastest track in the world. When I think about really fast running, I think about Monaco, I think about Hayward Field, maybe London. I do not think about Portland Track College. Um, but, you know, when you assemble this many talented runners together right before the Olympic trials, you are bound to get some good times. And a lot of these people are trying to run Olympic qualifiers or Olympic trials qualifiers, including Hobbs Kessler, who after this race said, I was just hoping to break three 36 and make it to the trials now let's get their splits here that's 300 meters 40 seconds really fast running something you might expect to see maybe in an 800 you know but a 1500 obviously these rabbits are getting after it let's get them through 400 meters this will give us an idea of what kind of pace they're running coming through here in 55 seconds that is so fast that's 150 for 800 that, that's the pace that they're running right now well under four minute miling now i mentioned rabbits guys when you're watching pro track and field, maybe not in champ certainly not in championship settings, but in time trials like this, you're going to have rabbits, right? The meet director are actually paying people, probably the first, I would guess, two rep people here are going to be rabbits. They're not racing. They're not trying to finish. They are paid to hit a pace, and they actually get bonused usually. There he goes. He steps off the track at uh, 600 meters. They are there to hit pace so that the runners behind them have something to key off of. It's very mentally taxing to be thinking about pace the whole race. It's a lot easier to just glue yourself to the runner in front of you, let them break the wind, and you just go for the ride. Now, we're here to watch Hobbs Kessler. He's back. There he is, uh, middle of the pack. Um, just like I said, going for the ride. Um, I'm really focused here right now on mullet guy. His name's actually Craig Angles. I'm going to call it mullet guy because he has a beautiful mullet. Coming through in 154, 155 through 800 meters. Now, Craig Engels, he is the class of the field. Um, he's sitting there in fifth, and he is the veteran. He's really the one that, that if you watch pro track and field, you're probably watching this race to see what he can do. Um, he has the accolades, and you know I think he's probably 24, 25. He really has the experience to navigate a field like this. Hobbs, uh, I believe, is there on the rail in the tracksmith outfit, about eighth or ninth. And here, Engels is moving up in lane two. This is just the perfect race for angles he's got people willing to do the work uh you know the, the conditions look great he is kind of working his way up to what i would call you know that matt centro its position but he's still actually a little farther back than i would have expected to see him this is the bell lap this is when you really have to set up for that final kick and you know where hobbs is deep in the back and even where Angles is, you know, that's not who I would pick to win this. I mean, Angles is buried. Look at Angles on the rail. He is so buried deep, but he knows it. So he's starting to make this move. He makes a little move on the inside of the rail. He's actually shoving people outside while he moves up on the inside of the rail. And Hobbs Kessler is back there. He's buried as well. This is such a tight pack for a race this fast. When you're talking about, you know, 330 low, 330 mid, these things string out really well. To have 12 people it's got to be at least a dozen. 12 people kicking for the finish line. This is crazy crowded. Angles, again, the class of the field, moves out to lane two. He is going to win this race. But look at Hobbs Kessler in the back, finishes fifth. Now, you wouldn't normally celebrate a fifth place finish, but I think Hobbs knew what he had just accomplished, right? He saw the times coming. There's Craig Angles, 333. Um, and Hobbs was just, what, a second behind him. Hobbs throws his hands up in the air 
because he knows he's just punched his ticket to the Olympic trials. But does he know that he just ran 3.34.36? Here he is again. Watch Hobbs. He's in eighth place. He swings off the turn. He still has to manage this much traffic. And despite weaving in and out of runners, here he is from eighth to seventh to sixth to fifth to, yeah, finishes fifth right here. Throws up his arms. 3.34.36. And Angles knows it. That not only is the high school record, it takes down a 20-year-old record by Mr. Alan Webb. And I actually watched Alan run it en route to his uh, American record, high school American record in the mile. He ran 3.38.26. So Hobbs here shaves nearly four seconds off the high school record. But it goes further. He actually would currently have the NCAA record if he was even in college, which he's not. Now, he is signed to Northern Arizona University, a program that's really known for developing distance talent. Um, but right now, he's already working under one of the greatest coaches in the world, which is Ron Warhurst. And I believe he trains with Nick Willis and the entire crew out there. All right, so here are my three takeaways from that race. Number one, hats off to Hobbs Kessler. I... You know, I'm not going to toot my own horn here, but I'm one of the most decorated middle distance runners that America's had in the last 15, 20 years. I trained day in and day out for 20 plus years to run middle distance racing. My personal best in the 1500, I'm very proud of 334.7, I believe it is. And this kid just beat me. This kid ran 334.36. He's a slight, he's a little bit faster than I ever ran the event, and he's only 18 years old. The talent in America is phenomenal and the talent in this kid is just it is literally mind blowing. Dolphin, make sure you make my mind explode when I say that cuz that's how talented this kid is. So hats off to Hobbs Kessler. He deserved uh this incredible performance and and does, and I'm just so excited to see what he does in the next few weeks, but anytime I see a performance right now, this is where the sport is at. Anytime I see an incredible performance, a world record, you know, uh, a new personal best, I immediately say well, what shoes was he wearing? What shoes was she wearing? I hate that that's a question we have to ask right now, but the technology in shoes is moving so fast that everybody asks that question after you see a great performance. Well, what shoes were they wearing? The shoes are so important that even if you're sponsored by, let's say, Under Armour or Brooks or uh, Reebok or Adidas, people are wearing Nike's new super shoes even though they have to get a contractual uh, release, something that releases them from their contract to wear those shoes that are made by another company. That's insane. Why would a company, why would any company allow their athlete to race in a competitor's product? Well, these athletes know that the shoes make such a big difference that they have to let their athletes um, compete in them. It's just, it's just crazy to me that shoe technology is developing that fast and i actually made a video talking about what my my thoughts are on shoe technology if you want to watch it we'll link it right here but um what shoes was he wearing if you know what shoes he was wearing let me know in the comments below and let's get a chat going on how we think these shoes need to be addressed or regulated um number three i mentioned that he had signed to nau um i wonder this is my third takeaway is he actually going to go to college like what's the point um, I say that not trying to, I hope if he's watching this, I'm not trying to encourage him to not go to college, but honestly, what's the point of running NCAAs if you're already the fastest person to have ever run through NCAAs or he would have the NCAA record right now? Um, you know, one thing that we've seen is high schoolers go on to make Olympic teams. We saw that with Sydney McLaughlin. We saw that with, um, Allison Felix. Now, Allison's an interesting example because in her contract, she actually went on to college. I believe she got a degree from USC, but she wrote it into her call contract, I believe, that she had to have um, her tuition paid for. So here's an example where Hobbs could go get his uh, college degree, but he could have whoever's about to sponsor him, if he wants to turn pro, could have them pay for that college. So um, I, I don't know. There's a lot of arguments for NCAA developing talent, but it seems... Hobbs, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And right now you have found something that works very, very well for you with Ron Warhurst and and, uh, and whatever else you've got set up there in, in Ann Arbor. So I'm not one to give unsolicited advice, so I'm not trying to do that right now. But I am extremely excited to see where Hobbs goes on to run, not just in you know the future next year or years beyond, but where does he run in the next few weeks? The Olympic trials will be here in Eugene, Oregon, my hometown, uh, starting in just what? 10 days and we have several incredible meetup videos planned so if you're coming into eugene for the olympic trials next monday i will tell you 
next Tuesday. We're dropping these videos on Tuesday. Next Tuesday, I will tell you exactly how you can come meet up with me and run a mile or two. And uh, as always, ask me anything. So appreciate you guys watching this. Again, hats off to Hobbs Kessler. Can't wait to watch you run in the Olympic trials. See you guys next week.